Okay, welcome to C and C++ programming with Arduino framework. My name is Thomas and this is my web development cloud and IoT education channel. Today in this video I'm going to go through Arduino program structure and I'll explain how to print out text on the screen. So we're going to be something like a hello world program. Okay, so let's get started by creating a new project with this online Arduino simulator called Wokwi. Link to the website wokwi.com. You can find it in the description. Um, you can also use a different online Arduino simulator if you want, or the real board connected to your computer with Arduino IDE or Visual Studio Code with Platform IO. Okay, in order to start a new project, I'm gonna go to this section and I'm gonna click on Arduino Uno to open the simulator. Once the simulator is opened, we can see the code editor on the left and there is some code already written uh, here. Let me explain what it is for. So setup and loop are main functions of Arduino program. Whatever we put in between these and these braces will be run. So for example, if I add some code to switch on LED diode, given that this LED diode is wired up to the board, this diode is going to switch on. If I write instructions to print out some text on the screen, this is again what's going to happen. And that's actually what function in programming does. It performs a certain action, right? Like switching on the diode or printing out a text or doing some mathematical operations or this can be set of actions. So we can have a multiple actions being uh, run. Additionally, what's worth mentioning about the functions is that they can take value and they can return some value, but I'm not really gonna go into details on that today because there's gonna be a separate video just about functions. For now, what you need to know is that the void keyword here and here means that uh, this function, setup function or loop function, doesn't return any value, right? It just performs some actions, right? So setup and loop just perform actions. Okay, but why do we have two main functions instead of one? We could just have a one entry point, okay? Um, and the reason is because we have a one fundamental difference between how the instructions that we put for setup and the instructions we put for loop are run. As we can read in these comments, whatever we put for the setup is gonna be run only once at the beginning of the simulation or in case of the real board, as soon as you connect the board to the power, uh, you know, after uploading your code to the, to the board, to the microcontroller. For the loop, it is a bit different. The, these instructions run repeatedly. So that's just gonna be run on and on. Right after the setup instructions, the loop starts and just gonna continue on and on, like in a loop, right? Until you stop the simulation or you cut off the power from the real board. Okay, so now that we know what's going on with this code here, we can add some instructions to test the behavior of setup and loop functions and see how the code is executed. And as you may have probably guessed already, the instructions I'm gonna add are going to print out some uh, text, right, as the subject of the video. And now, in order to print out some text, when we program a microcontroller, we have to establish a serial communication. So the question is, what is serial communication now? Let me explain. First of all, what we need to know about Arduinos is that the code executes on a microcontroller, not on the computer. Basically what happens when we finish our program, that program gets compiled to binary. That's the language understood by the computer. Essentially just ones and zeros. And this is sent to the board, to the microcontroller, and it is executed there. And now if we want to print out some text so we can see it on our computer, what we have to do is to uh, program the serial communication initialization. So it establishes serial communication and then turns like this text into ones and zeros. 
and send it over USB cable to our computer one by one. This is essentially how serial does it. It's bit by bit, so one or zero by one or zero. And then on our computer, these ones and zeros get decoded to a text and it is displayed in a serial monitor. So we can see something like a hero world, for example. All of this is actually easier than it sounds. Let me show you. So to establish serial communication, we just need to write a single line of code and that is serial dot begin and we have to pass this value in between these brackets and that value is the number of bits that gets sent per second over the serial right so that what goes over usb to the computer and this is really it this establishes a serial communication with our computer um, technically, this is just a simulator, so everything happens in the browser in this computer, but if you had a real board, that would be the case. And now, once this is established, I can print out some text by just calling println, where I need to pass some text. It has to be uh, in between double quotes. So if I do something like a hello world, okay and I press on this place button, which is start the simulation, that starts the simulation. What we'll see is hello world just here, and we just see one hello world, okay? Because what I've done is to put that for a setup, right? So this is part of the setup instructions, which run only once. And now if I move that line to the loop instead, and stop the simulation, run it again. What we're going to see is like lots of hello words just being printed out. As you can see, because that just continues on and on, on and on. Okay. Let me maybe let me show you a slightly better example. So I'm going to copy that, paste here, and let's do hello world from setup, hello world from loop but let's add some delay. That's another function to call that basically waits a given number of milliseconds. So if I provide, let's say, maybe 3000 milliseconds, that's three seconds, that's gonna wait until uh, this loop, these instructions are gonna be run again. So let me just start the simulation again. So you should see We've got a hello from setup and then hello from loop. Another one, another one. It basically, it gets printed out every three seconds because that, that is called repeatedly, okay? And delay just delays the program by three seconds. Okay, cool. So that's how we print out text on the screen. Before I finish, I'm gonna give you one more example because what I showed you is just the print ln function and that function prints entire line of text and then goes to the next line. So we can see hello world from the loop, for example, is in a single line and then it goes to the next one. There is another function called print, just print. And if you use that one instead, let maybe remove the rest. What's going to happen if I restart the simulation after the first printout, hello world from setup, that goes to the next line and in the loop, when just print is called, we can see the hello is being displayed one after another. It doesn't go to the next line. Okay, so that's the difference between print and print ln. So print ln basically adds a special character at the end of this text, this string type, basically a text, and that is backslash n. If I do something like that, that's gonna be like it was before. So it's gonna go to the next line, right? So remember backslash n, that's just like a new line special character. Okay, and this is it for today. The next video is gonna be about simple data types and variables. Thank you very much for watching. 
If you are interested in this type of content, this type of tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you will stay up to date with any new videos. Thanks again and cheers. Bye.